to the Ramon Foster Show. He's Ramon in Hendersonville, Tennessee. I'm Dan Kovacevic in Pittsburgh. And, Moan, we're heading into another Baltimore week. We're going to talk about that later in the show, uh, get into your prediction and so forth. And let's talk about Kenny. Let's really yeah. talk about Kenny Pickett. Oh. Um, there's, there's a tendency, I think, among some to overblow when he does well. And there's a tendency among others to say, ah, that's it. He's no good. He's no good. Anytime <laughs> some little thing goes wrong. Uh, has he progressed? Is he getting better in your eyes? Uh, yeah. For a rookie quarterback in today's NFL with the way offenses are run in college, I think he has progressed. I think he has made some strides in understanding this league. Taking care of the ball is always most important. I know, and I can tell, and I know you can too, that's been drilled home to him. He's rolling out of the pocket. He's looking, looking. Ah, screw it. Throw it away. <laughs> It's happening it. every time, right? every time, dude, it's, it's good to see that. It's good to see him, uh, that throw we spoke about the other day when it comes down to the way he kind of, you know, you said he always goes to the dump off option. Now he kind of expand his looks and made that down the seam look a dangerous one to kind of have. I, I think the understanding of what his receivers are capable of has been important also. And just the poise aspect of it. Like, I think we've seen that grow for a rookie quarterback in today's NFL. And I can, I don't think I can stress that enough when it comes down to how these guys come into the NFL. They either have it. They I think the understanding now or the expectation now for young quarterbacks is you either have it right now or we're going to give you a year or two and you out. I think Kenny's in a position to where he can gradually get to that point. I like the growth so far. He's starting as a rookie. He's making plays as a rookie. And we're seeing more patience from him as a rookie. So, yeah, I'm with that. Now, you know that I agree with all of this, right? Uh, okay, so, yeah, okay. So, devil's advocate here. I because this is, this, but this isn't fake. This is, this is a legit issue. Okay. He's played all these games now, and he has five total touchdown passes. He's yet to have a game in which he's thrown more than one touchdown pass. So just because the last thing that's in our heads is this beautiful touchdown pass to George Pickens <laughs> that wins the game, Franco's night, and everything else yeah. doesn't override the reality that he's not finding the end zone anywhere near often enough. They do move between the 20s. Kenny talks about this himself, that they need to get better once they get deeper into the, ter in, into the other team's territory. What's missing there, Moan? Uh, I think teams get a little bit tighter down there. That's why I know for sure we always harp the defensively to, you know, in, in practices and hearing them like, yo, you got to tighten this up when it comes down to red zone defense. Defenses take pride in that. It became an issue for us even while we was playing, even with Ben, that we would announce offensively. And I was a guy, of course, that announced we are in the red zone every practice specifically on Thursdays or Fridays because Thursdays, hey, a situational ball and Fridays pretty much dress rehearsal. We're in the red zone, even getting down to the 10. We're in the tight red zone. The box gets tighter right there, DK, when it comes down to the red zone area too. The defenders have less room to work with, which means a bigger pile of, of, of like defensive territory for them. You can't run the long routes. And yes, everything's constricted. Uh, I think that may be more of a team issue. And it could be a little bit of him, though, too, and, like, not trusting his decision-making in those moments. Because if you turn the ball over right there, points are done. You know, and I think it's been more or less a cautionary tale of you're still young, you're ready to walk, we're not running yet. And I can't fault them if that's the way they're treating Kenny Pickett moving forward this year. But I'll say this, too. Uh, when it comes down to his production in that tight red zone, red zone area, more times than not, this team over the last couple of years has rather go to Najee Harris than almost trusting any quarterback for that matter. Yeah, or quarterback or for that matter, tight end in short yardage situations. Look at the way the nature of that drive on yeah. Sunday or Saturday night accumulated where they just kept pounding Friermuth, Friermuth. Uh, and then even earlier in the game before the Raiders took steps to take Deontay Johnson away, there was a lot of that underneath. I feel like Kenny's gotten comfortable with the underneath stuff. Okay. Yeah. I feel like he's found that part of his game and he feels good about it. But mm -hmm. underneath stuff, as you know, once you get closer to the other team's goal line, 
doesn't mean yeah. anything. It just means you were the dummy who threw short of the sticks. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and but, that's, but that, was, that's what I, I want to see him find a way to f- hit more of those George Pickens type yeah. passes, those down the seam, you know, that, you know who that pass looked like? What's that? Ben. Did it? I, that's good. But, but to me, that's why I'm hoping that moment for him and this team kind of continues on. And truthfully, I hope it gives back to your guy. You know who your guy is. Oh, I was Canada. hoping you would do it so I didn't have to. <laughs> I hope it get back to him. They're like, yo, this is what he's capable of. I had a dad recently tell me about his own child. Like, man, he's not getting enough work because he's a guy that needs to be pushed and done more because they know the personality of players. They know the traits of their kid. And I'm hoping for... You, you know, like Kenny Pickett, like, you know, the traits of this guy now moving forward, like he can be a gunslinger. He can have one in the chamber ready to go if you decide to call that option for him. To your point about the dump off we had, that conversation about DK, that's because, hey, go here. If you don't see it right now, go here. And that's become the theme of this offense, which to me has kind of suffocated it since we saw that this past game. Yeah, everything was check down, check down, check down. At some point or other, you got to say, hey, this thing I'm holding in my hand isn't a football. It's a dagger, and I'm about to stick it right in this other team. And you have to have a bit of an attitude about it. You do. And that's that that side of cockiness that starting quarterbacks have to have. And it looks smug. It looks like they're just a, a bad person in a sense. But there has to be a level of that. When Joe Flacco was hot, he knew he was just tossing that ball up and know he'd get either completion or DPI. Did he not? And you asked oh him about God. it, and what did he do? He's better at that than anybody it. I've ever seen. The but what was his response? DPI. He didn't care. He'd be like, "What? I don't care. Yeah, stop it move, if you did can. Did they move the sticks or not? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but but the, I will charge this, though, DK, in that portion of, like, growth and, like, putting the ball in his hand. Getting multiple touchdowns in a game has to kind of be a norm moving forward. I honestly think it it, it, it puts him at a higher position as far as the franchise goes, as far as I hate to even say that type of stuff, being the numero uno guy, which most most franchises, the quarterback is, but it also does this. It saves Najee a little bit more. I think we all see the talent in Najee Harris, right? But boy, no if question. he continues to get these touches like this, DK, I don't know if we're going to have him long enough to actually see him and Kenny and George <laughs> and Pat grow together, right? We ain't going to talk about it right now, but that's a hard conversation to have. Yeah, I think you're going to see Kenny continue to lay the bricks down on the foundation, okay? And that part of the process this year, I do respect. And I'm sure, and being fair here, that Matt Canada has had plenty to do with that, okay? Yeah. Giving giving credit where it's due. Uh, The whole throwing the ball away, uh, I guarantee you that that is a Mike Tomlin, Matt Canada, and Mike Sullivan conversation, all three of them, every single day. Well, yes, look what sir. happened. They pretty much eliminated his interceptions. He threw the one god awful one against yeah. the Raiders, okay? But for the most part, those have been out of his game. Mm-hmm. And now what you're seeing is just a little bit more risk taking. Those out how about those the sideline patterns to Fryermuth? You know what I'm talking about? To Deontay. Shows, those yeah. balls have been perfect, Moan. Yes, they have, you know? man. Um, so you challenged him not having a multi touchdown passing game? I'm saying, I'm saying, yeah, when we come back, let's talk a little bit about Steelers versus Ravens. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show. It is another Baltimore week, less than a month since the last one. And, you know, Ramon, instead of analyzing these things, I, I humbly submit here that from now on we just condense this whole concept down to this you brought a kicker we brought justin tucker all these games are decided decided by three points or less so we win right uh, you know what we got our <laughs> guy back this time okay that's and true hopefully that's true ho- hopefully we keep both of them back by both i mean uh, can he pick it also well uh, uh, hopefully I, I, yeah hopefully uh chris boswell doesn't bat 500 this week either like he did against the raiders I know, man. Uh, hey, hey. It was Although a that had to ball. feel, as that had to feel like a boulder. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? not making excuses for him because he got to make them. But boy, that had to feel like a brick or boulder on his foot. Didn't even make a sound. It was just. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, you know what? As many people are missing in the stadium, and that's probably what you heard. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but it doesn't I said move. This, it just sits there on the tee. <laughs> they're just like, oh, that's ugly, man. But it, it is that week again. And by that week, that means the rat bird. I mean, it means the Ravens, okay? And I'm wearing this red shirt specifically for them because I'm seeing red. And I said this comment early, and he was like, there's no luck in these games. I'll say this straight into the camera. Baltimore, you were lucky to beat us last time, okay? And I'll just leave it right there, all right? Both teams had backup quarterbacks, just played poor. Nobody knew what to do with J.K. Dobbins. Nobody knew what, to, knew what to do with our offense when Mr. Trubisky came in other than throw the ball to the Baltimore Ravens, right? Like, there was three interceptions in that game, and you lose by two. Like, seriously, you know, there's a lot to be said I'll, about that. I'll tell you what wasn't lucky about Baltimore's effort, and that was Roquan Smith. Uh, in addition oh to knocking goodness. Kenny out of the game with what I thought was a – I mean, there's nothing wrong with his tackle there. You know, no. there's people debating whether or not it was legal. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Kenny had it already wasn't. gotten away from one guy in the backfield. Roquan catches up to him and says, okay, you're not getting past me. And he puts him down right. for good. And yeah. I, I mean tackle him. I didn't mean put him down for yeah, good. Tackle. You know what I mean? He's not trying to hurt yeah. him. He's trying to get him to the ground. Well, he did. Uh, mm -hmm. I thought Roquan Smith was unbelievable in every facet of the game for them. I don't know that the Steelers have a counter for that. Um, you know what? They're going to have to find a way to keep him occupied. That's, that's where I was going, DK. Yeah, you remember the conversation we had about, like, this is what it takes moving forward? Like, yeah. this team are presented with that again when it comes down to Roquan. You did it, okay, Franco Harris's night in, in Pittsburgh, right, at Ackershore. Like now that you know what it takes to actually strain and push and 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 strive to get wins like that, Roquan's got to be as neutralized as you possibly can. You know what I'm saying? Like moving forward, right. like whoever's tasked with the job to get into the second level for him, or if it's the tight end having to block him on the like do those things. And this is something I want to kind of correlate this game to DK as a, as a, in accordance to uh, Kenny Pickett. We had a situation before with a Baltimore player, right, when which the quarterback got knocked out of the game. You remember that okay. with Earl Thomas? You remember okay. those situations? Mm -hmm. And what I don't want in this game is to kind of let that carry over. Or Kenny feels like he got to do certain things in this game to beat Roquan Smith. That was just the luck of a draw. I still look at Earl Thomas's hit on, on, uh, on, on Mason Rudolph mm -hmm. as being, hey, look, man, whether dirty or not, it just happened. It's a part of the game, right? Like that, that just charge it to what it was. He got fined behind it as far as Earl went and, and Roquan's situation. You were just in a bad spot. This ain't a vendetta against him. This is a vendetta against the entire defense of Baltimore Ravens at their house for potential to make it into the playoffs or being above no, 500. I don't think it's a matter of vendetta-ing against him. I think it's just a matter of game planning. You, you now have to... If you didn't take him seriously as a as a wrecking ball type threat, you sure will now. And that means both in terms of his because his coverage was really good. It was. Okay. Yeah. And, and 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 for him to come after you and get into your backfield and wreak havoc on top of everything else, you're gonna have to account for him. And I don't know if that means, you know, more Zach Gentry, you know, all the different things that you can do to take some take a weapon out of your, your offense. Yeah. But I, I, I just, let's put it this way. I really feel like how they handle or how they navigate Roquan Smith and that front, the front they have on that, on that defense of Baltimore's yeah. is going to define how this game goes uh, for the Steelers. What you got? Uh, as, as far as the wins and losses with this group, yeah, to, uh, to me, prediction, pr prediction it's it's all, dependent on one player to me and that's JK. If if this defense can get a stop on him and control him uh with with all their might. He didn't have a great game against uh Atlanta. He put up 120 on us, 125 on ball, uh, on, on Cleveland and 59 last week. It's it's kind of the way I see this game shaping up. Okay, They're going to rely on him again, okay? Yeah. They uh, should and this they they should. Exactly. Uh, this 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 defense, I think, has just the biggest task, a bigger task than what the offense does for Roquan. Roquan, you can kind of move away from a little bit. J.K. Dobbins, you can't. They open up gaps. Guys lost their gap integrity this past game when it came down to what was expected from 
this group moving forward. That can't happen again. I don't care if it is on the road. Cam, I saw it. The same thing you said a second ago, the, uh, the, the, the uh, other episode. We got to see that again. Two sacks, all the TFLs and PDs that you had. It's got to happen again, especially if Lamar's not back in there for him. Um, I actually do have us winning this game. Oh, I do. It, it can't I, be by more than three points. No, absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> what you absolutely got? Absolutely not. Um, I got us 13, 12. <laughs> Everybody's going to be picking the Steelers to score 13 points from now until the end of time. <laughs> They're going to have to show me more, DK. I, w- I was going 17 and 20s, man. Uh, anything over that, man, betters. Hey, good luck. Bet the over. <laughs> You've got four field goals coming. When we come back, the only segment that matters. That's it. Welcome back to the Ramon Foster Show and the only segment that matters. It's brought to you by our friends at the Get-Go Cafe and Market, where quality is the core of every menu item. Three expert chefs fine-tune every detail so that every sub, burger, salad, wrap, drink, and app is crafted for craveability. Order your favorite entry at the Get-Go Cafe and Market today. Better believe it. And here's what Earl Gomez has to say. Hey, Moan! Great show, DK. Ramon is a perfect co-host for you. He brings your pessimistic attitude to optimistic. LOL. Great show, man. Happy New Year to you from Steelers Nation. (laughs) All right, Earl. Now, it would be crazy for me to say, hey, I'm, I'm not the pessimistic, angry guy, and then come at you over this. So, Happy New Year, Earl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How's that? That's, that's what we are. That's what Is we it? are, DK. He called you alpha being pessimistic, man. What? I don't I don't know. I don't see it that way. In fact, more often than not, I get criticized in my writing for being a little bit too, too hopeful, optimistic. A little bit too yeah. Really? But what but here's the what ends up happening, I think, on this show is that <laughs> You're you're on the inside. You're a player for eleven years. You're in this world. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you are by your very nature going to be that guy who says, you know, go get them, go team, and whatever yeah. else. Where I'm going to be the guy who I covered all the games. I covered the wins and the losses, and I had to call it like it was in all the situations. But I don't think I'm pessimistic about anything, Moan. Are you pessimistic about the Steelers? Are optimistic uh, I, I'm, in general? I, I, in general, well, I'm, well, I like to think the word realist. I, I, okay. I'd rather go that route. Optimism means you're selling something, not as much. Like, yeah. am I an upper type of person? I'm more up than I am down because there's, there's, it's dreadful being down like that. You know, like that's a hard life to live. If you can speak truth and reality, and that's what I feel like when, when we did this. That's one thing we said we was gonna do. Look, if it's good, we're gonna say if it's good. If it's bad. Then you know what is bad, and not that's just how we're going to. I'm mm-hmm. I'm not into hot takes. Uh, I mean, if we can, you know, say hey, I believe this is going to happen, that's one thing. Like I know how you feel about the OC, you know, <laughs> or when the O line play is bad, I can say it's bad because I have eyes on it and I see it. Or let's say we've criticized a bunch of people on this show too, or not critiqued. We've critiqued. We've said, of course, Najee not hitting the holes where we thought they should have gone. If if uh, Trubisky, you, there's a lot. Yeah, Najee is the one that jumps out for me because at the time that we were saying these things about Najee, I don't think anybody else was. No. Because we were looking out there, but you could see that from your offensive line perspective, and you could see their holes are there. Just yeah. hit them. Uh, and then once he did that, then even Najee, you know, Najee openly talks about it. Earlier in the season, there were holes, and I just needed to hit them, and now all of a sudden we're not criminals. You know, or we're pessimistic or whatever it is. I, I don't think pessimism and optimism like you, I completely agree with you on that has anything to do with this. I think it's just a matter of looking at it, trying to keep an open mind to wherever direction yeah. it goes. And if it's something that's like, I think we, we agree that we feel mm-hmm. uh, that Kenny Pickett is going to have a, a good NFL career. Okay. Yeah. Is that optimistic or is that just watching what we're seeing? You know, what we've seen. 
Or, or it's the idea, too, that we can criticize this OL, and I'll just go that group, or even the D-line, That's right? perfect, perfect. For, for, for not holding their end of, of the stick or the end of the rope as tight as they need to in certain situations. And, heck, they get called out by Hall of Famers like Joe Green, right? Mm-hmm. But when it's good, and they've been good these last, what? They've been about a month streak or so, DK? They aren't giving in up much of, on the ground, not other than Baltimore. Other than Baltimore, other than they Baltimore. haven't been giving up anything on the ground. And and when it's when it's at that point though, you gotta pay respect to that too. Like I know guys in this industry now that I've been in that can't wait to ask the hard question or can't wait to make the hot take or be the first ones with the the breaking news and be wrong or have to eat <laughs> crow. Right? Yeah. That happens a lot in here, and that's why I've kind of vowed, and I know that's where you come from. It like your delivery of what you're saying can be, hey, a little down. But if it's true, it's true, right? That's all that matters in the end of all of this. Yeah, I, I mean, to me, I I just see, you know, I, I see the situation hopefully with an open mind and see what's there, whether it's positive or negative. You don't go into it with a lens is all I'm saying. Yeah. What's that? The, the, the one biggest topic, and I'm surprised we hadn't even mentioned it, mm. the Coach Tomlin conversation. Oh, Sure. Yeah, because you can only take extreme positions on this, according yeah. to a lot of people in the fan base. You're either a Tomlin supporter or you're a Tomlin hater. What if you're not either? Or, or, or what if it's honestly year to year in how you approach it? Like, does that mean you implode and get rid of a guy? Like, to, to look at this team and what they've done so far, be a, a quality team or two here. They're in position to kind of close out decent enough for the season. Heck, <laughs> I heard the draft uh, order the other day, and I was just like, dang, I wish we'd do a little bit lower right there. You know what I'm saying? But that also contributes to what the coach is. That also contributes to the development of players. That also contributes to uh, responsibility of being a pro inside that team. Like, to say that you expected – the Steelers will win that Saturday night uh, on Christmas Eve. I don't think many people gave them a shot. I know Vegas didn't. If you bet on that and won, I hate to say betting on the games, but if you bet on that and won, then so be it. You are who we are, who we say Pittsburgh is. Like he finds mm-hmm. a way to bring the best out of people, right? No question. Well, on that note, Moan, before we go today, I'm going to offer my uh, my offer my own prediction here just for our man Earl Gomez. Go ahead. And that DK. is that the, the Steelers are going to lose this game by about 150 and on their way home are going to be struck by a meteor. <laughs> like a, an actual, like a meteor the size of Maryland is going to. Government going fabricated. To take them down. Government fabricated one, too. That's right, pal. Since That's they're coming right, from pal. Maryland. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Moan, let's do this again. Let's do this again uh, next year. Yeah, next year, man. Happy New Year, everybody. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. If you're drinking, get a car home, okay? That's my tidbit for you.